Guilty. 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 So it is decided. For practicing the dark arts of the arcane, you will be stripped of all magical abilities and banished from this world for the rest of your days. Sentence to be carried out immediately. One hundred days. It's both a long time in hardcore Minecraft, but also a short time to accomplish a lot. Special shout out to Luke the Notable who came up with this very cool 100 days concept and a very special thank you to Forge Labs who turned me on to this with his amazing zombie apocalypse video. Seriously, I think it's one of the best Minecraft videos I've ever seen. I'll link that video as well. I'll be lightly role playing this again just like my last video, this time as an unnamed mage who has been stripped of his once formidable power. Seems he dipped a little too deeply into the dark side. If you enjoy the video and would like to subscribe for tons of content, both 100 Days videos as well as more traditional Let's Plays from my long-term survival world, please do. I promise you won't regret it. Enough of all that. Let's get on with the video. Enjoy. So this is how it is. I can't believe they actually did it. Perhaps one of my more interesting experiments may have gone wrong, but the council wouldn't even listen to my reasoning. I told them I could correct it, but they took my power and they sent me here. Nothing is known of this place, except no one has ever returned. I will be the first, though. I will return to this so-called council and discuss my banishment up close and personal. But first, I need to survive this prison world. If I had even a taste of my old magic, this would be the simplest of tasks, but without it, I'm going to need to make tools like a commoner. How embarrassing. I actually had to use my fist to break some wood just to make some simple rudimentary wood tools, and then I could upgrade those with stone. Well, and then I saw this. Oh, oh, what are these? Uh, yeah, no thank you. No thank you, dinosaurs. Freaking dinosaurs are here? Oh, man. Yeah, that's not good. Look, I don't know if these beasts are friendly, but I'm not going anywhere near them. Then, right after that, everything changed. I found a village. I had no idea there was intelligent life in this dimension. I tried talking to one of these, well, people, I guess. They seem almost mute, making only slight grunting sounds to me. Maybe someday I could find a way to trade with them, but for now, my stomach was starting to rumble a bit, and I need some food. Luckily, the farmers in this place had been busy and had some ripe carrots and wheat. Looks like I won't starve. What in the hell is this? There is liquid fury of here. That changes everything. The fools on the village council stripped me of my power, but perhaps they weren't able to strip me of my ability to regain power. I need to make a book right away. By making an item frame with some of these cows I just slaughtered and putting a book near the liquid ethereum, oh, the magic happens. Literally, the magic happens. By unlocking this book, I unlocked my own spells. Now, I'm nowhere near the powerful wizard that I was when I was banished, but I have the ability to cast spells again. The sun was going down, and I still hadn't found a sheep to make a bed yet, and yeah, that's when I got attacked by a tree. Oh shoot! Oh shoot! What? 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 What the heck? Oh, thank god he's trapped. Alright, the mighty tree that attacked me maybe wasn't so mighty after all, but on its death it spawned a phantom that could have been scary had I not been able to hide under this tree. I headed back to the village and snuck in someone's house and hid there for the night. I wanted to start the day by gathering some wood. Not as easy as you might think whenever you need to protect against trees that can come alive and kill you, but fortunately I was able to get some rudimentary supplies without much incident. I'll need to make an oculus first, and to get that I'll need some blue topaz. Now, I haven't seen any, so let's just hope it generates in this dimension as well. I gathered some wood, some more food, and had to take out some more of these ice spiders. 
I head down to the mine to mine for the rest of the night. I finally found some blue topaz after mining for almost an entire day. I also got a nice haul of iron and even some diamonds, but for a mage who needs to make an oculus, blue topaz is where it's at. I was able to craft an oculus finally, my first step back into the arcane. I had three ability points I can grant myself, touch, dig, and projectile. This won't help me dispatch any of these terrible monsters, but it will help me gain more power, and for now that's where my focus is. Magic is like a muscle. You have to use it, and use it effectively to gain more muscle. If I were, say, to make a lightning spell and just cast it wildly at the sky, outside of it looking like quite the light show, nothing would happen to me. If I'm digging stone and ore, I'll gain more power the more I use it, which will then allow me to make more and greater spells. You know, it seems in this world, even mining is no easy task. Oh, jeez, oh, God. Oh, what the... Come on, dude. Yeah, trees come alive, coal comes alive. How do I survive here? I was able to craft a few more parts of what I'll need to create my first spell. It's a bit of a process. When I learned the arcane arts, I was in Teeterly's school for the gifted in arcane. I took for granted that they had all the simple machines there. Sure, we learned how to create them, thankfully for me, but we never really needed to. If we needed an oculus, there was always one just down the hall. If I'm going to be living in this place for a while, I'm going to need some room. I spent the evening today clearing some space just beside my house to make the altar. Hopefully I have all the parts I need. Again, I stayed out too late tonight and I almost paid the ultimate price. I had to run back to the safety of my house and eat some food and slay them from inside my door. Yeah, I'm not real proud of myself here, but look, I don't have any spells yet, so I gotta do what I gotta do. I spent time today building up my altar. Magic walls almost tripped me up, but I was able to find a bit more Vinium ore, and I got the altar all set up. Time to craft my first spell officially. Projectile Dig. That's it. Such a simple spell will give so much power in time. I just need to put the book in the lectern, drop a blank rune in the altar, Vinium dust, arrow, and a snowball. How could I have forgotten that? All projectile spells require a snowball, and I surely have not seen any inside this terrible dimension. I spent every second of the night and following day searching for snow and came up empty. I have no reason to expect that snow is even a thing in this dimension, but I surely hope so. If there is no snow, I will never be able to make a projectile spell, and that's going to be bad for surviving. I need to keep searching. At the end of the day, I managed to find my first wool so I can actually make a bed. No more sleepless nights for me. Another day out searching, I found an interesting house made of brick. The stairs lead to a very, very dark basement that I am in no way prepared to go check out. I will mark it in my map for later. Finally! I was out for so long searching, I actually had to travel back home to drop off all of the loot I've collected. Then I ventured out in a new direction to the south, and sure enough, snow. After crafting just a few more components, orange rune, iron pick, iron shovel, and spell parchment, Lo and behold, I have it. My first spell since being banished. I am so excited. I head down to the mines to mine and level up my magic power for the rest of the day. I spent a good deal of time today to make a second spell. I remember there being a simple mage light spell taught to mere students at the school. It's a hard pill to swallow for such an experienced mage such as myself, but... I'm going to need to start with some basic student spells, I suppose. I crafted the book for the spell Projectile Mage Light and went out in the storm to craft it, only to be met and scared half to death by some sort of cloud storm monster. This place is insane! After I brushed myself off, I went back out in the rain and made my spell. Testing this thing out, I am not sure if it's how basic I've become or what, but I am so happy and proud of this little light. I'm going to try to light up the whole village and keep some of these monsters away tomorrow. It's become obvious that I need a decent attack spell. This world is just so intense. 
I work today on crafting a basic projectile force damage spell. Sure, look, I'd love to add some enhancements, but I don't have anywhere near that type of materials. This spell is awesome, but now I need some sort of protection. Sure, I could make iron armor. I certainly have enough of iron, but uh, that's fine for some commoner. Perhaps one of these idiots I live in this village with, but for a mage? No, I need mage robes, and to get that, I need leather, and to get that, I need cows and wheat. We're making a giant farming operation here, I think. There's always something. Well, I worked today on making some space for a nice wheat farm for the cows. The stupid village is so snug in the middle of a spruce forest that there really isn't room for anything and roads and all that stuff. So let's clear out some space right in the middle and we'll have some room for wheat and probably attach the cow pen to that. I suppose if I'm going to be spending the next few months living here while my power grows, I may as well make something pleasing to the eye. I got lucky again. A huge, and I mean huge, pool of liquid ethereum formed just under a small layer of dirt in my base. I'm going to clear this out and make it a proper pool. To a mage, ethereum is like liquid gold. Being freaking scared of the night is getting old. Some sort of winged demon thing chased me inside today. I got more done around the town for a crop field and this cow pasture, but boy, these demons are scary. I need armor in a bad way. I worked on landscaping the town again today. Then something happened. I heard a scream outside my house and looked out just to see this. So apparently invasion of the frozen jerks is a thing here. That's spectacular. I can't sleep tonight due to monsters literally standing on my roof. So I headed down to the mines and went to town. If anything's going to kill me now that I have a decent attack spell, it will be my own stupidity at this point. I was out planting wheat today, and nighttime almost ended me when I was stupid and didn't go to sleep. A wolf beast caught me almost completely out of mana. Yikes. I killed it with my own shovel at least, but it was close. I made a mistake. Me, the all-knowing master mage, didn't consult the arcane compendium before gathering leather for my mage robes. I was browsing through the pages this morning and dropped the book. It fell open to a recipe for the Mage Helm, which requires one piece of leather, but four wool. To my dismay, I checked the other parts and the same held true for them as well. So when morning broke, I was off to find sheep. These are the slowest and most infuriating animals. I cannot believe a master of the arcane arts has to hold wheat in his hand to coax these beasts to follow. Not only that, but it turns out that these dinosaurs are indeed peaceful, thankfully, as I just backed into them not knowing they were behind me. And worse though, they will follow me when I'm holding wheat. I was completely swarmed by the largest animals I've ever seen. To wonder I wasn't crushed. I didn't make it all the way back home that night and had to leave my sheep out in nature and run home so I could sleep. I hope they make it through the night. I got the sheep back home. Home? Is this my home? No, it's not my home, and I won't think of it that way. This is simply a way station along the road to my sweet revenge. I don't think these sheep will be safe, even within my little village, from all these monsters, unless I built some sort of shelter. I did start laying out a basic plans for maybe a barn in the future. I may include a cow aspect to protect them as well. I'm a man on a mission. I want to feel invulnerable, and the added punch to my spells would be a nice side effect from full mage armor. I'm off to find brown dye. I had three options. Cocoa beans, found only in a jungle. Flat mushrooms, whatever they are. Not the normal mushrooms. No, I, I tried those. These mushrooms have to be flat to make brown dye. Not the other brown mushrooms, which are brown. Or cattails. I think that's my best shot. I, I know from exploring to find snow that there is a swamp across the sea. I headed that way, and sure enough, cattails. Oh, right, also, I almost died again. This is getting old. I need armor, I need enchanting, and I need a good, decent healing spell. All right, I'm getting serious now. 
I need brown wool and I needed to move these freaking cows. I worked on the cow pasture for a bit and kept an eye out for when the sheep ate some grass. Also, I learned something else. Apparently, sheep eating puzzle won't regrow their wool, so blah, I had to replace all of their pen's puzzle with grass. But I'm getting closer. I spent the day gathering wool and slapping a small roof on the sheep pen wall. This should make it blend in with the village a bit better and give the sheep some protection in case some sort of flying beast starts shooting projectiles all over the place. After the sunset, I dove in to make my mage armor. The only hang up is the pants, which I need one single gunpowder. How don't I have any gunpowder for all the mobs I've killed in the past 19 days? It's unbelievable. I'm gonna have to really watch for a creeper somewhere. No creepers yet, but I'm going to start dealing with something else that is annoying me. You know, these crop nature monsters that spawn when I'm breaking uh, carrots or grass or whatever, I, I thought that if I were to put a small roof on some of the smaller farms, maybe they would spawn and stay within fighting range. It did work on a little bit of a test run. While I was working on another one of these farms, one of the idiot villagers came out and offered me a drink of water. I could have gotten my own, but it was kind. Maybe I could help these people somehow survive in this awful place. Today I thought of something. I, I don't know why I didn't do this before, but you know, we mages do things other than just pure magic. We've learned ways to build normal stuff too, just better. I crafted a magician's workbench and its upgrades today. This allows me to hold all of my most crafted recipes in the machine as well as different crafting components in its storage. It's a really nice little upgrade to my life. The next thing I'd like to do is start work on a actual good and proper healing spell. Well, I mean, as good as I can at my meager level. First thing I need to do is I need to get some glowstone, and that means a trip to the nether. And, well, look, the nether in my old home wasn't so dangerous a place, but this prison dimension, it could be a whole lot worse. If the monsters that inhabit the overworld inhabit the nether, I could be in for a real fight. I gathered some obsidian, made some flint and steel, and got prepared. My trip to the nether was a wild success. First and most importantly, I didn't die. It's always key. Also, I managed to get a lot of glowstone right off the top. I pushed my luck by staying and killing some mobs to finally get some gunpowder. I am very excited to complete my mage robes. I need some green dye for a healing spell, and to get green dye, you have to have a cactus, and to have a cactus, you have to have a desert. Well, luckily, Thanks to my search for snow, I know pretty much where a desert is, so I took a boat far down to the southwest, and I found it. While I was in this desert, I decided that I think it's time to find out what dinosaur tastes like. So, since I know these are passive already, I went ahead and took out as many as I could find. I'm going to be eating dinosaur steak for the next couple weeks. I did some real building today. I'd like to get my crafting altar a bit more protected so I can make spells in peace. And to try to come up with a simple design that fits this little village that we have here. These people are so helpless. I don't understand how they haven't been slain by the incredible amounts of terrible monsters all over the place. It boggles my mind. I suppose I should start thinking of a wall soon. I built my first real mage machine today, my first obelisk in this new world. With it, I can make much more powerful spells as well as a kale factor, and I can cook things like meat and potatoes in it. Also, as a side product, it generates lots of vitium dust for me, which is something I'm woefully short on. I'll need to get some liquid ethereum to power it. Fortunately, I have a large pool just outside my door. Finally, today is the day, day 27, and I'm going to make my first, honest to goodness, proper healing spell. Self heal regeneration. I'm going to get the bang of the initial heal, plus I believe a few seconds of heal regen on top of that. What a spell. I did have to link my obelisk to the crafting altar, and I'm glad I still remembered how to do that. I do need a better place to store my liquid ethereum I'm finding around here. Maybe a few storage ponds or a tank or something like that. After 28 days, I was starting to feel a little bit cooped up, so I headed out of town. I found some sort of old ancient dungeon that I could go exploring. It started off pretty well. I wanted to test myself against something that I could hit and something that would hit me back. And yeah, there was no shortage here in this dungeon. There were some scary monsters. 
But using my projectile dig, I could actually break any monster spawners. And using my projectile light, I could light up rooms from a distance away. It actually went pretty well. I didn't delve down to the very deepest depths here. My inventory had filled up with loot. And to be honest, it was getting harder per level that I went down. And I just didn't want to risk dying down here and, well, <laughs> being dead. I kept pushing my luck further and further, keep thinking, okay, one more turn, one more crate, one more chest, and then this happened. Oh, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, 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 baby. That was close. It's a funny thing, after killing really endless monsters and terrible things in this world, one simple zombie with a pickaxe almost took me out. I think one more hit and I would have been done for. What good is a wizard without a wizard tower? It's time to build a place where I can do some real work and maybe get away from the people in my village just a little bit. I'd like to enchant my gear as soon as I possibly can. The real hang up right now is a place to actually do it. And well, I guess sugarcane for books too. Uh, I, I'm farming sugarcane though. That's a problem that will take care of itself in short order. Let's just build a tower today. I think it turned out pretty well. It was finally time to enchant my gear up, my brand new wizard tower, and I learned something terrible. It takes 30 levels to enchant gear in this terrible dimension. It's like the stories I read from years and years and years ago, how it used to be back in my father's and his father's day. 30 levels, man. Yikes. I am so beyond over monster attacks and just the absolute constant nature of them. So today I'm going out and I'm going to be building a wall. I decided that for this wall, I wanted to build sort of an organic shape of the wall following the natural landscape. And this doesn't need to be the fanciest wall of all time. It just needs to be high enough to stop monsters from freely walking into my village. I spent the entire day extending my wall up, so it's about four or five meters high around. Again, it's not going to win a beauty contest, but you know what? It should work to keep at least some of the monsters out. Yeah, I know there's flying monsters in this dimension, but at least the, the, the wandering ones aren't just going to wander up and burn the whole place down. I cut down all the trees within the walls. I wanted to see how much space I'd work with. And then I went outside the walls to cut down some more trees just to gather wood for future buildings and stuff. And when I came back after the sun went down, well, the unthinkable happened. My village was very, very quiet. There was no one here. Yeah, I don't know if maybe something came and carried them away, ate them and their bones and their clothes, everything or what, but I had one villager remaining. Damn it. I'm going to protect that one dude. That one guy, he is going to live. I'm not going to let anything happen to him. I did some real work today. I feel like I'm finally moving out of the novice mage skill set and moving into slightly more interesting things. To make my Silk Touch Dig spell, which is something I really want, I am going to need an Air Essence. And so to get that, I need to make Arcane Ash and smelt that. And to get that, you need Netherrack, Redstone, Glowstone, and Bone Meal. Well, Netherrack is the one thing I don't really have any of, so I ventured into the Nether and risked it all to get some. And I figured while I was here, I may as well grab some quartz and things that are sitting around as well. It was pretty much uneventful other than that. And with that, I completed my Silk Touch Dig spell. This is going to be so great. I'm going to be able to pick up grass, pick up glass, pick up stone without it turning into cobblestone, which is going to be great for building more. I'm really, really excited for this spell. With my 34 levels, I decided to enchant my chest piece today. I got fairly unlucky, only unbreaking three. There's a lot of worse things you can get than just unbreaking three, but I was hoping for unbreaking... And some sort of protection. But look, I'll take it. To make more spells, I'm going to need blue skill points. And as I'm leveled up to intermediate mage power now, they're not coming free. That means it's time to start summoning some bosses. So I think I'll summon the Earth Guardian first and see how well I do against him. The only thing is to summon the Earth Guardian, you need an emerald. And I don't have any emerald. So I'm off to a nearby village to see if I can make a wheat trade and grab a handful. 
I had another idea for a guardian that maybe won't be quite so pricey as well. There's such a thing as a water guardian, and it's actually fairly cheap to summon. The only thing you have to wait for is rain. So, you know, it can happen frequently or not so much. After night fell instead of sleep, I went into the mines. I gotta tell you, mining is such a pleasure now since I have enough mana reserved that essentially I never run out. I can mine as quickly as I can walk and fill my inventory in just minutes. The only downside is breaking ores with my spells doesn't yield experience, which I need in order to enchant my gear. I'll have to think about that sometime. After just days and days of just bad luck at every turn, finally things changed and went my way. I was just finishing work on the Water Guardian summoning platform and it started to rain. I rushed back to my house, grabbed eight redstone inlays, wood for boats, iron for buckets of water, and I got a summon off while the rain kept on going. Okay, I'll admit I'm not so proud of how I fought him. It wasn't exactly a fair fight. I put up gates to keep him far away from me and just shot my rock shot spell from the safety of good distance here. Uh, look, it's not on me the water guardian doesn't have hands and can't open a gate. The rain persisted overnight and despite the danger of mobs coming up behind me, the rewards were just too tempting. I stayed out all night and much of the next day killing the water guardians over and over and over and over. I summoned and killed eight water guardians before the rain stopped. Eight! In my wildest dreams, I thought perhaps I could get maybe two, maybe three, but eight? Oh man, I gotta get back to the oculus. I spent all of the next day looking at my points in the oculus and deciding where to put them and what my first spell would be. I didn't want to waste any of these points because I don't know when the next time the rain is going to fall and I'm not totally convinced of my ability to beat the Earth Guardian. So I finally decided that I wanted a way to harvest leaves better for building this place. I want my town to look beautiful and leaves would be a big help. I created Projectile Autumn's Harvest Feather Touch spell and my hope is it will drop a lot and lot of leaves every time I cast it at a tree. I don't think it will need the Area of Effect modifier because that is uh, going to be a little bit out of my reach as of yet. It was a good day and a bad day. I guess the bad first. All my cows are dead. I have no idea what happened. Uh, I can probably guess. I mean, there are terrible monsters that spawn up every two seconds and try to kill everything they see, but... Still, I didn't see it, and I wasn't here to defend them. Yeah, cows are all gone. It's okay, I'm not out of food. I have plenty of crops here in the town to feed me. Not a big deal. I have one surviving villager here. Uh, maybe I should bring him some dinosaur meat just to make sure he's fed. We can't communicate at all, but maybe we can come to some sort of understanding. It's been 40 days at this point. I suppose it's just the two of us here. I may as well make an attempt to talk to him. On the good side, my Autumn Harvest spell works perfectly. Maybe I'll really class up the place and put a bunch of leaves all over and just bring some nature in so it's not just grass and there's some random houses inside the walls. Yeah, I think it's going to be really nice. I made a hay spell today and I sure love it. I made it so I could run out and find leather a little quicker now that my cows are all dead. I got completely sidetracked, however, by a new idea. While I was running outside, I thought of an easy little design for the top of a wall that could maybe allow me to patrol up there. And if any of those huge monsters come attacking, it would be really nice to have a higher vantage point to fight them. Just to mix up the palette, I decided to gather a lot of oak, since it stands out a bit from the rest of the village, which is just bathed and dripping in spruce. That's a long time here, I may as well make the place look nice. I worked on the top of a wall today, and yeah, it's coming along. It's probably going to require another day to work, but what I really like about having an overhang on a wall is it stops anyone from scaling up the wall. That's right. I'm looking at you, spiders. I was working on the wall all morning on day 43, and I took a little break to come and talk to my one villager in my town. I don't know, try to come up with some words that maybe we could both understand, and well, then this happened. Look. If you could just tell me your name. Uh. Wait. Did you say 
Bob? Is your name Bob? Ah. Okay, Bob it is. So roughly translated, and yeah, I mean very roughly translated. Ah. My neighbor's name is Bob? I think he was trying to tell me he could help. It's so difficult. We have so few words that we both understand. Perhaps I may have dismissed the people living in this village as sheer idiots with the intelligence of a cow. Maybe I was a little too hasty. I will look forward to talking more with Bob. I truly can't have a conversation at this point, but it is nice to hear another voice. You know, one that's not screaming monster sounds while chasing me all over the place. I want to upgrade my liquid Ethereum storage. Back in the university, we had giant tanks to hold it, and, well, that doesn't seem like a thing I can produce here, so I'll have to improvise a bit. I started some simple round holes in the ground to hold a decent amount and have on hand, just in case my little area becomes under siege by monsters. Well, but then it started to rain again, and you know I couldn't resist. Yeah, baby, six more blue orbs. This is almost too easy. I, it is too easy. I'm not complaining, though. The next thing I want to think about is how to get some green orbs next. Uh, maybe the Air Guardian? Hmm, maybe. I finished up the Ethereum pools here on day 45, and I also added a fence to the wheat field. I still don't have a solid plan on what to do about the cows. I actually do need more leather. I could go out and harvest leather from random wild cows and monsters, but I'd rather have a breeding supply right here at home. The thought of coaxing more cows inside the walls is not something I am relishing. I couldn't sleep tonight, though. I've been thinking about my quality of life. I think roads would really help. Nothing super complicated, just something I could walk from place to place and not be stepping in animal duty or dead monster goo from the night before. I've had something gnawing at the back of my mind for quite some time, and only this morning did I figure out what it is. This world, this dimension, is too quiet. Okay, yeah, there's constant sounds of monsters and terrible things everywhere, but there are no loud booms, no explosions from meteorites hitting the ground. There should be moonstone everywhere at this point, but there isn't. I remember my masters at university used to talk about a sort of poor man's version of Moonstone that ancient mages could use when there were shortages. You see, mages used to be much, much more prevalent than they are in my time, and Moonstone will only fall near a fairly accomplished mage. At this point, I think I am fairly accomplished, and yet, no Moonstone. I have to assume that I'm the only mage in this area, so I think it's fair to say Moonstone isn't falling in this dimension. I'm going to have to use the artificial moonstone made from iron blocks. Yeah, it's a little pricey, but if this spell works, I shouldn't be short of materials ever again. I have been wanting to make an area of effect dig spell with feather touch thrown in as well. This is going to be amazing. It's a little complicated though. First, I had to upgrade my crafting altar, goodbye glass blocks, and hello lapis caps. One day I'd like to change up for a better block, moonstone or sunstone, but well, at the moment lapis is just fine. After a lot of components, and a lot of components, it works. Oh, this is going to be fun. I spent the entirety of day 47 mining. I, I really don't need endless materials, truly, but I just can't help myself. It is so fun. You have to understand, I was a really powerful mage in my old life and stripped of all that ability suddenly and with basically no warning. To regain this power to shape and destroy giant strips of land with nothing but a gesture and a thought? Oh, oh it's a feeling all right. With my new artificial moonstone, I'm actually able to do the ritual of purification on an obelisk. This is a great spell. It's a little pricey because you need to kill a bunch of pigs to get the, the pig fat for the candles, but well worth it. So with this, you can take the obelisk and you can stop it from requiring ethereum or ventium ore to function. It can harness the power of just daylight to work. So basically, it works for free, but only during the day. Well, since I sleep a lot of nights, that's not going to be much of an issue, and it's going to be a net win where I can power my kale factor or my altar basically all the time. It's really, really nice. 
I worked on the roads all day in my little village here, and, you know, having such a steady supply of stone really changed everything. It's nice to not have to worry about materials, and I can just build where I want to build. 50 days in this prison, and it's starting to feel a little bit more habitable. I have, I, I don't know, a friend? Uh, at least someone I can talk to in the nights after a hard day's work. The walls are high, and monster attacks are seemingly a little bit less frequent. The next major step will be to light this place up, but first, I needed a lot of oak. So I used my hay spell to run up to the huge oak forest nearby and spent the day dealing with my oak shortage. Now that I'm halfway to the power I'll need to return to my world, I want to start making life a bit easier so I can focus more on my studies. Firstly, I upgraded my spell desk so I can make more complex spells. Now each spell can actually have up to five variations. Secondly, I started making something that will be a bit more complicated, but well worth it. My only fear is that flickers won't spawn in this dimension. Flickers are amazing little arcane critters. With some simple guidance, they can do all kinds of things. Farming, butchering, storage. Yeah, I'm more than ready for that. I caught a lot of flickers today, and not having an absolute plan for them, I wasn't sure exactly which type I needed. Not that it really matters. You don't get to choose which ones pop into existence. I just wanted to have a nice selection so that when I'm ready to automate some stuff, I have the flickers in a box ready to go. This wall needs to be completed. After spending a few days working on my magic workshop, it felt good to get outside and work a little bit more on the cosmetic part of the village. Still a few more things to do, but every block that I build up keeps me and Bob a little bit more safe. Well, here we go. To make my first flicker habitat, I need slime balls, and I have not found any slimes here at all. I took a boat to the swamp across the ocean and stayed awake all night. Yeah, it was awful and scary. Yeah, it was at that point, after getting blindness and almost blown up by a creeper while getting hit by some other sort of flying creature, that I thought, hey, you know what, it's time to get out of here. I did return with a nice bit, 13 slime balls and some pig fat, some alm. It, it was really a good haul, and it was a little bit more dangerous than I wish it were. But hey, you know what, I made it out safe, and I live to see another day. I made a flicker habitat, and the flicker focus of felled oak. Man, this is terrific. Now, hypothetically, when a tree grows, the flicker should cut it down automatically. Oh, man, I've missed flickers so much. I have a fully functional dark oak farm. This is terrific. I added a magic broom to sweep up the logs, apples, and saplings and drop it right in a chest for me. There's no way to really automatically replant it, but I don't mind swinging back to replant logs. It's just going to be nice that it's going to automatically chop them down for me. I'll have to work on some sort of advanced storage solution later. I've been building uh, completely out of spruce with some oak. This is going to be really nice to have a third wood to work with. Plus, dark oak goes well with my dark black heart. Actually, that you know that's kind of a thing. I've not been feeling very dark-hearted recently. None of the anger and hate that used to overwhelm me is really part of me anymore. I'm not sure why. I'm extremely angry when I think about it being imprisoned here, but... Maybe it's my friendship with Bob or knowing that I need to look after him that's kind of keeping me from delving deeper into the darker side of the arcane. That's kind of what got me here in the first place, but I don't feel that pull anymore. I don't know. I'm going to need to think on this. Maybe this place is changing me. Later in the day, I started my quest for green orbs. I'm going to need a lot of these to sort of enhance my magic skill. And, well, to get that, I'm going to need to summon the air guardian. And, well, to summon the air guardian, you have to summon him quite high up in the air. So I went to the top of this little mountain peak that I have nearby my village and started building a, well, another mage tower. But this one's going to be a lot taller. It needs to be basically cloud height at the top where I will summon the guardian. Yeah, it's okay. It'll be a nice place to look over my creation of this town. The tower is growing and growing. I finally remembered to bring a bed up with me to save the return trip back down to my house, which at this point is pretty far down below. So the view, the view is really nice from up top, but uh, getting down is actually not that easy of a task. I really need to work on a ladder or stairs or something. I finished up the final details on the mage tower, and yeah, after 59 days, we are just about ready to summon this air guardian. 
I think tomorrow I'm going to gather the materials I need to bring him into this world and hopefully slay him. I may have gotten ahead of myself just a little bit. I do want to slap a roof on this thing and actually add a little bit of infrastructure going up, like like some floors, so it's not just a pole with a ladder in the middle. I, I, maybe eventually we'll dress this up with some libraries and all that kind of mage type of things. I had intended to summon the Air Guardian today, but it turns out that to do that, I need to make some air essences, and, well, that takes some time, so it turns out we're delaying that summoning procedure for an additional day, but I swear tomorrow... The dude is going down, hopefully a whole bunch of times. Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes everything works out perfectly. I summoned the Air Guardian seven times and easily, slowly, but easily took him out, gathering seven green orbs and granting myself some very, very nice new abilities. Tomorrow, I think, is going to be an awesome spellcrafting day. I spent the entire day making one of my all-time favorite spells, maybe the very best spell in all of this arcane world, called Mark and Recall. It's amazing. You can mark a spot in the ground, go anywhere you want throughout the entire world, and recall yourself back to that spot. I made this a little bit extra, though. I made it both a self-casting spell and a projectile spell. So that way, if I'm out traveling and I see some pigs or some cows or some mushrooms or something and I want to send them back to my base, I can projectile recall and they will instantly be teleported back to wherever my mark is. Oh, oh, this is going to be a time saver. No more carrying wheat and having animals follow me like a commoner. No, baby, I'm a mage. On one of my Air Guardian kills, he dropped his sled, and that is awesome. So I have now gained the ability of flight. It's not great flight, it's not exactly uh, a wizard flight, but I can ride on this thing and I can go anywhere I want. Flying is awesome. Oh yes. I can't even express how joyful it is to fly through the air again after that ability was sort of stripped from me. I spent the rest of the afternoon sending sheep, cows, pigs, chickens all back to my base using my amazing recall spell. We're gonna have a whole thriving farm here for me and Bob. It's gonna be great. Separating these bees from their one pen is surely a lot easier with recall, but oh, they're still such stupid creatures. Even breeding them is a pain. Maybe there's an arcane solution to that too. I wanted to make a charm spell to breed my animals, and to do that, I really wanted to be an AOE charm spell, and to do that, I need TNT, and to get that, I need gunpowder, which I still don't really have any, so I am going to head to the nether and grab some gunpowder. But before I go there, I am acquiring quite a few spells, so I went ahead and used some of my precious leather, now that I have a supply of cows around, to craft three spell books. That way I have one for attack spells, one for sort of uh, dig dig spells and stuff like that and then one for utility such as mark and recall mage light all that kind of stuff it's gonna help to really sort of organize my inventory i think all right off to the nether can i just tell you how much i hate the nether here i look the nether in our normal world it's scary this is ridiculous everything here is trying to kill you and has means to do it it's really awful I, i've really sort of taken to killing everything i see from a good distance Oh, man. Well, I made it out alive and got some gunpowder, so I should be ready to craft my spell. Oh, boy. I need eggs. I need a life essence, and to get that, I need eggs. This day is insane. I stood around the entire day waiting for two eggs before I finally got them. I finally did it. I took my couple eggs and made my charm spell. Oh, there is love in the air. For future growth in my arcane arts here, I'm going to need some Sarah Blossoms. I have a couple, but I need like ten. I have basically two choices here, either bone meal grass and just hope, or go exploring. I'll be honest here, if I didn't have recall and an air sled, I'd probably just use up all the rest of my bone meal, but I don't have that much, and you know, with recall, it's only a one-way trip, so it's not too bad. 
Sour blossoms grow in primarily green areas, forests, plains, that kind of thing. So I searched a bunch of those today and I had to deal with a bunch of monsters under the tree canopy. I don't think these ones are necessarily dangerous, but they're scary and they leave off some sort of poisonous cloud after I kill them. Things got a little dicey towards the end of my voyage here and so I had to put my recall to good use. Thank goodness I have it. We finally have gates to our little village here. I spent two months in this place with wide open gates, wondering why monsters kept attacking me. And yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to have some sort of semi-functional way of keeping stuff out and also keeping Bob in. You never know if he's gonna wander off. There's a small section of my base here that I've never really liked. This sort of weird cliff area here. I decided to add a retaining wall, especially now that I have gates, this is going to be probably the main way in and out, so I'm just going to dress it up a little bit, and then eventually I have something in mind to go up on top of that area, but, well, that's down the road a bit. My chickens are dead! Oh, come on! Apparently some sort of monster got into the pen, killed them, didn't even bother to eat their meat, and then just went away. <laughs> really nice. Really nice. The sheep and other animals I have seem to be okay, and especially the sheep I've had here for a while, penned in in that sort of, I don't know, foundation wall area thing. So maybe I need to move all the animals in there just to keep them safe. If something killed them all and then went away, I gotta think it's some sort of winged creature, and I gotta protect against that. Bob and I have been speaking pretty much every morning and every night, and we've formed some sort of hybrid language. I basically speak in my language and he kind of grunts back, but together we've been consistently expanding on the topics we can semi-fluently discuss. This morning over a dino steak breakfast, Bob asked me about learning the ways of the arcane. I've been thinking once I leave this place to get my sweet revenge on my captors, he'll be here alone and, well, <laughs> helpless. Maybe I could teach him a few basic spells. I spent the rest of the day building up this barn around all of my animals to protect them and just thinking about Bob and his training. In truth, I've never actually had a student before, and at this point, I'm still quite intermediate myself, but I once was a great and powerful mage, and I suppose I could start to guide an apprentice. For just throwing together a roof really quickly over the course of only one day, the barn actually turned out to be yeah, kind of nice. I think it's going to be a good place for my animals to live. Should protect them, basically. I, instead of use glass to further reinforce the only ways in for monsters, I did use fence. It should keep them out, I think, and... Yeah, I feel like my animals are going to be safe. I made a kind of big decision today. If I'm going to be taking on an apprentice, I need a place to teach him. Additionally, I am quite tired of living in this tiny little house. I want something more fitting of a mage of my stature. I'm going to clear a large bit of land and begin construction this morning. Laying out a giant mansion slash school slash survival fortress with enough room to survive Fight monsters and also live in some sort of luxury isn't as easy as it sounds. I don't want to make a mistake here, and I want to make sure I have enough room for all the rituals and teaching I'll be doing here. I have 25 more days here in this dimension to gain the rest of my power, as well as train Bob to be self-sufficient when I leave. There's no time to waste. I added dark oak floors to the place. Very fancy, right? My tree farm is actually good enough that I have quite a bit of dark oak sitting around, so I can actually start to use it for building. After that, I worked the rest of the day on building up walls and sort of a skeletal structure of how this house is going to be. Boy, it's weird. There's no squares, basically. It's all sort of random heights and random rooms, all set aside with sort of purposes in mind. And yeah, I'm going to have to work out some really interesting roof ideas to make this whole thing work. Day 76 here was spent building up more of the roof line, starting to add some second floor structure, and also planning out exactly where the bedrooms for my students are going to be. They say students? Yeah, maybe I have a plan on that. Building roofs all day long. All day. I have some windows too. I began the process of adding some interior design ideas to the house. I still haven't shown it to Bob, but I am very, very excited for him to see sort of his new workshop student house mansion thing that he's gonna live in. I'm actually beginning to run low on resources. I can hardly believe it, honestly. The amount of spruce trees in particular that I've cut down to make this base, but, well, that's the situation. I do have my automatic tree farm, which is nice for slow passive tree growth, but I need to probably go on a scavenging run. I decided to take the day and go out exploring. I was just kind of feeling a little bit cooped up and wanted to get out of town and 
Sure enough, I found something awesome. A freaking redwood forest. Man, this is awesome. I wish I had known this was here about, I don't know, 80 days ago or so. But regardless, I used my sweet dig spell to basically take down these majestic trees in about four seconds if it weren't for their living tree protectors. I think these things are called Ents, and yeah, they're not hard, but they sure get old whenever about eight of them spawn every time you're trying to cut down a tree. I spent a good deal of time today training Bob. He has a pretty good grasp on a dig spell, and I'm hoping he'll learn a decent attack spell soon as well. I want to finish the room in his mansion and get him moved in so we can spend even more time working together. I'm starting to run out of days. In 20 days, I should be powerful enough to return to my world and rain down punishment on those who sought to imprison me. I was continuing work on the mansion, and it started to rain. I checked my oculus to see if I need any more blue orbs, and I think I'm good for now. The only thing I really need is a bunch of red orbs, because I need to get in some advanced stuff. Now, I'm not going to get red orbs for free until I get to magic level 40, and that still weighs off. So, I may need to find a new way or a faster way to get some. I think I know how, but I'm not looking forward to it very much. After that, I started working on school. And when I say school, I mean an actual arcane school that I'm going to be building here over the next couple days. Bob can't be alone. It's not fair to him, and it's not safe for him either. Tomorrow... I have a surprise for a friend. Yeah, I said tomorrow, but I meant the next day. I keep finding more things I want to add to the mansion, and the constant onslaught of monster attacks, that's not helping either. Yes! This is so great! So much for Bob living a life of utter isolation. Using my mark and recall spell, I kidnapped... I, I mean, I relocated a village to my mage academy. This small group of apprentices will someday rule this world. The last thing is to bring Bob out of his tiny little house... Yeah, let's make him wear a name tag just so I make sure I know who is who and recall him to his new family. Look at him! He's so happy! Oh, Bob. I'm sitting here smiling like a butcher's dog. There's a lot of crafting that goes into this next step, so the idea is I need plenty of red orbs. You can get these by summoning a Winter Guardian, but that's not so easy. First, you can only summon him in Winter Biomes, and maybe only when it's snowing. I'm not actually sure. I can't remember that part. The nearest snowy area is quite far away, so the problem is, if it starts raining here at the base, by the time I make the journey, even with the air sled, it's very likely going to be done raining by then. I'm going to construct two keystone gateways between my base and the winter area. They're quite expensive to make, requiring 12 ender pearls. Unfortunately, I have 13 and plenty of other materials, but additionally, they also need power and not a big deal, but I'm going to need to do two more rituals of purification so that they're constantly powered during the daytime. I flew down to the winter area and made the other gateway and it works. I can't believe it, kind of. I'm going to build a containment cage for this winter guardian. Yeah, I'm not kidding. This dude is really tough. After I work on the gateways, I had a long lecture with my students about various guardians and elements. I don't want one of them watching me kill these guardians and thinking that they can do the same. It's funny, I spend all this time getting the essences and building the gateways and powering everything up, and then I realize I have no pumpkins. I have like three pumpkins to my name, and it takes three pumpkins to summon this dude. So, yeah, I just gotta wait for pumpkins to grow. Holy crap, this is so painful. This dude will not die. Yeah, I got him summoned and contained and everything, and that's all fine, but... Oh, man. I need a better spell. This takes forever. Literally. Literally an entire day of shooting this dude to get him dead. Oh, man. I did it, though. I returned home, and I took my one juicy red orb, and I plunked it in. I opened my Oculus, and I got it. I got flight. I made the book, and... I guess I have a real issue here. I need more red orbs, so here we go again. By the time I got him dead, it was already day 91. I'm hoping I can make a flame shot and possibly take him out a lot faster. I wish I had that damage modifier. Oh, this is so much better. 
Flames take him down really fast, so I should be able to now summon him a few more times as long as my pumpkin supply holds out and get a bunch of red orbs. It's now officially a week before I go and return back to my captors, pay them a little visit. With my new flame spell, I think I should be ready. It's time to start building the portal. To draw enough power, I'm going to need to make a very large with a couple obelisks powering the entire thing up. It's going to take probably most of my remaining resources to complete this. And the portal is complete. I finished it today. It's not functional yet, but a structure should hold it in place. I took today off building and spent the entire time trying to instruct my students. I'm really running out of time and I'm worried about these guys. There are some important matters at hand. Form education possibly isn't in my villagers culture here, but thanks to Bob acting as kind of translator, I think some of the point is getting through despite their inability to stand still for two seconds. I built the two obelisks needed to power the portal and turned them on and well, we're ready to go. I can flip the switch at any point and power it on. I just need to do a couple more things before I leave this place. I finished off the walls properly by adding a good deal of fence and you know, after my departure, I don't want any more nasties like ice spiders to harass Bob and his family. <laughs> it's his family. I guess it's really my family too now. These people are such nitwits at time, they're difficult to teach, but I will miss them. There's another thing that has been annoying me over the last 98 days or so, and that is my nether portal. I need to keep it open so my students can go and gather what they need. There are some nether materials needed in the arcane, but the steady invasion of demon beasts is annoyance to me, but it could be deadly to them. I constructed a dark obelisk or a black orum to protect them. Basically, anything that comes through that portal should be sucked up and destroyed and actually turned into Ethereum. And since I'll have a surplus of Ethereum nearby, why not set a, up a Kale Factor or three to smelt their ores and such for free? Well, today's the day. It is time. My students gathered to see me off. I think there were some who were sad to see me go. Some were worried about what would happen to them once their protector or their teacher had left them. I can't explain what happened exactly. I was looking at the portal, envisioning my revenge, my rage at the people who imprisoned me in this place, and I just couldn't find that fire. I couldn't find the anger or the lust for revenge against those who did me wrong. Instead, there was worry. I worried for my people, the ones who followed me, who left their village to come here and build a better society under my teachings. I only need one more step forward to leave this place, this place where monster attacks are the order of the day and where every single step forward is met with resistance and pain. And yet, I could not take that last step. I turned around and returned to my people. Maybe tomorrow, I thought. Maybe tomorrow I'll seek my revenge. But today, after 100 days in this place, we have a lot of work to do. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons and YouTube members. You guys make all the things I do on the channel here possible. I am so grateful for you. Thank you to everyone who watched this very long video and followed the journey of 100 days hardcore Minecraft, uh, becoming a mage and regaining all of my lost power. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I promise you won't regret it. There's going to be more 100 days content because I love this format. I love telling the story through a little bit of a light role play sort of way, and hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Also on the channel, there is lots of other survival Minecraft, including my single player world, my very long term RTX capable single player world. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll check that out as well. It's more of a traditional let's play format where I get to just talk and just talk about my family and job and work and all that kind of stuff. It's a great time. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a thumbs up and look for the next one because there's going to be another one. I already have the theme and the story planned out. I just got to hit record. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Well, children, uh, that's the way I remember it anyway. Oh no, no, I don't regret it. We had so many things to build here, but maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I'll return home and give my captors a taste of my new abilities. But today, go practice your spells. We have a lot to do.